So let's look at an example in uh, how to use the Gauss-Jordan method to solve a system of linear equations. So the Gauss-Jordan method, remember, is going to um, take the augmented matrix down to its reduced row echelon form. And that's, of course, unique. Every matrix has a unique reduced row echelon form. So the Gauss-Jordan method involves the um, forward elimination um, and the backward elimination methods uh, sort of together, and we'll show how that works. Okay, so the first thing is we've got our system of linear equations. Remember, the important thing is to make sure that all your variables uh, are lined up. So we have all the x sub 1s, all the x sub 2s, all the x sub 3s, and so on. And then equal what your constants. So they have to be in this form. And from that, we're going to get the augmented matrix. And so the augmented matrix is simply getting rid of the variables themselves and the equal signs, if you recall. So the first row here, we're going to have a 2, and then a 4, and then a 1, and then a negative 1, and then equals 13. So this is the first equation there, the coefficients and the constant. The second row, 3, 6, 2, and then there's no x of 4. So remember what we're going to do there, we're going to put a 0 there. Coefficient of 0 equals 20, and then 1, 2, 0, negative 3 equals 6. And then 1, 2, 1, 1, 7. This is my augmented matrix for the system. And this is what we're going to operate on, remember, when we do these uh, elimination techniques. And we're basically, again, doing the row operations of what? Interchanging or swapping any two rows, multiplying any row by a non-zero constant, or adding a multiple of one row to another. And, um, and what you want to do as you're doing this is you're going to use the calculator to do all these steps. Okay, Very important because it's very easy to make a simple mistake there. I'm going to use the TI-83 in this example. The 84 is very similar. I'm going to go to the matrix, uh, second matrix, and we have names, math, edit. I'm going to scroll to the right to edit. And you, know, you may have some matrices already defined as I have. Um, you can use any of these. I'm going to use A. So I'm going to type 1 or hit enter. And then the size of the matrix. The first number is the number of rows. And so there's four rows. I type 4 and then enter. And then the number of columns. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 and enter. And then I'm going to enter in these, these, these values. And, and of course what you want to do there is when you type in 2 You'll see it appear down here, and make, to make the change, hit Enter. Press the Enter button, and it will actually shift to the next one. So I'll do 4, Enter, 1, Enter, and notice it continues to switch, shift over. Negative 1, make sure you do negative 1 with your negative uh, 1 sign there. And 13, Enter, and then it scrolls down, notice, to the second row. And so we continue that process. 3, 6, 2, and I'll just enter in the rest of these. Okay, and let me encourage you. The, the a very common mistake is there's a lot of numbers floating around here. Um, double check. Make sure again that you've written correctly the augmented matrix. Make sure your constants 13, 20, 6, 7 are correct. Your coefficients negative 1, 0, negative 3, 1 negative one zero, negative three one, and so on. Make sure they're matched up. And then again, double check with what you've entered in the calculator to what you have here. Because one symbol, one single number that's different is gonna mess the whole thing up, right? So make sure your columns here, I like to just go back through and double check one, two, zero, uh, one, four, six, two, two. And then the first one should be two, three, one, one. I double check very carefully, right? Make sure you do that. Okay, so in the uh, Gaussian elimination or Gauss-Jordan uh, method, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to start by getting a 1 here, okay, a 1 here. And there's a couple ways that you could do that. The way I'm going to do that is, which is typical, is to multiply the row by the reciprocal, okay. Now, um, 
you, you know, you, you, your, your algorithm basically will read, get to this first row, first column entry, and look at it. Is it a, is it a non-zero quantity? Like two, yes. Then multiply that row by the reciprocal. If it is zero there, then what the algorithm will say is interchange, look below and find a non, the first non-zero entry and interchange those. Okay, that's the way the algorithm works, and I'd like you to do it that way. Now, as a human, some of you might say, hey, it looks better to me to take rows one and three, for instance, or one and four, and interchange those, because then I get a one up there, right? And, and that's what I want is a one right there. That's, that's a valid uh, way of doing it. It's not technically the algorithm per se, you know, in its true essence in a sense, but it's certainly a valid way to, to uh, proceed. But typically when we're doing the Gauss elimination or Gauss-Jordan method, it's better to have that, this, this routine because if you're programming a calculator, uh, sorry, uh, writing a program for a calculator or a computer to do this work for you, then um, you, know, you will have to think about the, those, those um, think about the algorithm and how it's going to uh, play out. You don't want to make it too complicated. Um, and so this is what we're going to do. I'm going to take uh, uh, one half times row one, and I indicate row one with R subscript one, and I'm going to replace what row one with that. So that's the way, that's my notation. In the book, they'll write out a paragraph and say, you know, multiply row one by one half. Okay. And so what we're going to do in the calculator then to do that is I'm going to do second quit to get the quit gets me out of that matrix menu. And then I'm going to go back to the matrix menu. Um, and um, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, type one first of all and just hit enter and get my matrix here. And the reason I hit enter is I'm going to store this now in the answer. This is now in answer. If you remember answer on the calculator right above here, let me just do that. Do second, hit the second button, and then hit this this button, and that will copy answer. And what's the value of answer? If I hit enter, it's it's the value of that matrix, right? It's updated every time you hit enter. That value, whatever it is, uh, in this case a matrix, goes into the variable answer A N S. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to multiply row one by a half. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go to second matrix. And now this time over to math. We're going to do matrix math. And we're going to weigh down in the list. I'm actually going to push up to get to the bottom. It jumps all the way down to the bottom. These are the row operations. There's uh, my, my C. You, and it may not be C in your calculator, but you should have row swap, uh, row add. This is adds two rows together. Uh, multiply row and multiply row. Uh, and then add. And there's a certain syntax to this. Um, and I don't think I have that with me right now. Actually, let me check one second here. I might have that sheet. There's a sheet that uh, Jeff O'Connell at Olone College has made. Here it is that I have linked to, um, and you should get a copy of this. It looks like this, and, and this is for the 83 and 84, and these are the, um, these are the um, syntaxes, if you will, for the command. So to row swap, notice there's three entries separated by a comma. The first entry is the matrix that you're talking about, and then the second two are just the rows. Here it doesn't matter which order you put the rows in, but it will swap those those rows and this is the the matrix A that, that they're working on and you can see what happens when you enter this command notice rows one and two are swapped here this is multiply a row and the way this works the uh, there's four uh, arguments as well the first one is the multiplier which you're going to multiply the row by four and then the matrix and then comma the row number so row number one two and then three so the multiply row three by four multiply row three by four this is the, the way you do it. And this in the parentheses this is the, the sort of shorthand notation that I'm using. So the shorthand notation that I'm using. Okay, and that's what I'm going to write. And, and, I would, and, and I want you to write that as well each time you do the row operations. And then this is to add a multiple of one row to another. There's four entries there. You have the multiplier. I'm going to multiply a row by negative four in the matrix A. The row I'm multiplying by is one. 
and the row I'm adding it to is 2. So this says multiply negative 4 times row 1 and, and, and add that to row 2. And that's the notation I'm going to use, right, uh, in, in my shorthand notation. Okay, so we're going to multiply a row uh, by 1 half, and so I'm going to use my E right here, this, this asterisk row, multiply row. So hit enter. And the multiplier we said is 1 half, so I'll do 1 divided by 2. You could also do 0.5, but uh, I'm going to do 1 divided by 2, comma. If you remember, that multiplier was, uh, the, the syntax was the multiplier, right? The matrix. And my matrix, I can use A, but I'm just going to do second answer because that's, that's where that matrix is. I like to do it this way, answer each time, because I'm going to update this every time. And so answer will always be essentially my matrix. And then which row? Row number 1, the first row. Okay, now one more thing that's very helpful is uh, you can see when I divide by 2, uh, 13 for instance, and, and 1 and negative 1, these will be fractions. And, um, you know, of course, 1 half will just be 0. 0.5, that's fine. 13 halves will be 7.5, or, or 6.5 rather. But you could, you could leave it that way, but the best thing is to leave it in fraction form. I don't want you to write 1 13th, for instance, as a decimal, or 1 7th as a decimal. You need to leave it as a fraction. And the way to do that, under math, if you press math, the very first option is this wonderful key, convert to fraction. And that's what we're going to use at the end of that, so that now when I hit enter, I will get the, the result. The only thing that's changed, you'll see, is that first row. The dot, dot, dot means I, I need to scroll over to the right, and I can see everything in that first row. So I'm just going to recopy that first row, 1, or, or, or write out this new first row, 1 half, negative 1 half, and then 13 halves. Okay. Now all the other entries are the same in the calculator. Uh, and yes, I would like you to write those down um, anytime you do the row operation. I want you to write out the corresponding matrix in your calculator. These rows are all unchanged though. And you can go back to the calculator and see that's that's the case. You can copy down and see that's the case. Alright. Now once we get the leading one here, so that's that's the goal. We want to get the one here, right? Let's get one here. That's our leading or pivot one. Okay. Once we do that, what is the what is the plan? It's to get the zeros below that leading or get get zeros below that leading one. So I want to get zeros for each one of these three locations. And how do we do that? We do that by multiplying the pivot row in this case, the first row. Uh, by the basically the opposite of the entry. So if I want to get rid of this 3, I'm going to multiply row 1 by negative 3, and I'm going to add row negative 3 times row 1 to row 2. Uh, here, the opposite of 1 is negative 1, so I multiply row uh, 1 by negative 1, and I uh, add row 3 to negative 1 times row 1. It's really row 3 minus row 1, but we're going to use that adding a multiple of one row to another language. And same thing for that entry. Now, I only want you to do in any one step uh, a row operation to one equation. I don't want you to do more than one row operation to the same equation or row. The same row. Uh, and so you say, oh, that's going to be a lot. Well, actually, we can do all three of these row operations because this one, first one's going to affect row two, this one's going to affect row three, and this is going to affect row four. Okay, we are multiplying row one by different values, but we're not changing the value of row one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take row uh, 2, and I'm going to add uh, negative 3 times row 1, and that's going to become my new row 2. That's, that's going to zero out that right there. You see that when I multiply 1 by negative 3 and add those, that will give me a zero. I'm going to take row uh, 3 here, and I'm going to add negative 1 times row 1 and replace row 3 with that. And then I'm going to take row 4 and do the same thing, negative 1 times row 1 and replace row 4 with that. And now we're going to get our result. So how do, how do, we, how do we do each of these operations? So uh, first is um, go to matrix, math, and to uh, multiply row add, right? This is add a multiple of one row to another. Okay, and the format again, I'll just share that sheet, is... The multiplier goes first, if I want to do negative 4 times row 1 to row 2, the multiplier is first, the matrix, the row we're multiplying by, and the row we're adding it to. Okay, so make sure you're clear on that, on that operation. So the multiplier 
is negative 3. The matrix is answer. Remember, I'm just because I just this is my new matrix. This one up here with the after I multiplied row one by half, and then I'm going to multiply uh, row one, so comma row one, and I'm going to add that to row two. And of course, you have to replace row two with that result. That's the way it has to work. And again, go to math, press the math button right above alpha, or right below alpha, and then do convert to fraction. And, and there it is, and you see that zero there, right? Now, it did affect the other entries in the row, okay? did affect the other entries in the row. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and do these other two row operations because they will affect row three and four, and then I'll write out the matrix after that. So I can do three row operations. Again, I can do more than one row operation in a single step as long as I'm not doing more than one row operation to the same row. So you can't do like, you know, this one where you're changing row two and then say, oh, I'm also going to, you know, do negative four times row two. You can't, or, or multiply row two by two. I mean, you're kind of thinking ahead. Okay, so uh, let's do this. And, and, a, and a good key to use in this process is the entry command. If I do second and press this entry, it will recopy what I've just typed. And if you keep hitting it, it will go back to previous things. And so that's kind of helpful. So now I just edit this, right? The multiplier is now negative 1, and it's row 1, and I'm adding it to row 3. So I want to change that 2 to a 3. And I hit Enter. Got my fraction already there. And there it is. I got the 0, 0 there. Okay. And then I do second entry one more time. And this time I'm going to do negative 1 times row 1, but add that to row 4. So I change that 3 to a 4. Everything else is the same. Hit Enter. And there it is. There it is. So let's 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 see what we got here. So now I've got I'm going to go down columns one and then zero zero zero. And that's important. That's what we're trying to achieve, right? We've got these zeros now beneath these these values. So this was our sort of our second step in the process. Get the leading one and then zeros beneath your leading one. That's the way you always go. Now the rest is this one half one half negative one half, one half, and then scroll over a little bit, and get the last two columns, negative one half, three halves, negative five halves, three halves, thirteen halves, and so on. Lots of halves. Okay, so it's very easy to make a mistake in copying things down. Be real careful. But that's why it's real important to use your calculator from the get-go, because you might make a little mistake here, but you'll catch it typically with, with the calculator. Okay, so what happens now? What happens now is after you get the leading one here, you go to the second row, and you want to go to the next entry. So I want to get a leading one here. Okay, well if I look at that, that's a zero. And so um, you, you can't multiply by the reciprocal of zero. That's not going to work. So what you do if there's not if it's a zero here, um, it will say if it is a non-zero number there, if it was like a three, then I would multiply by the reciprocal one third. This the second row would multiply by three. But since there's a zero there, I need to look beneath, not above, but beneath this zero to see if I can find a, a, a non-zero entry. Okay. In this case, there is none. Okay. If there was like a right down here in this third row, second column, right there, if there was a four, then I would at that point, that's where I would do an interchange of rows 2 and 3. I would get the 4 up here, and then I can multiply, excuse me, row 2 by 1 fourth, the reciprocal, to get the leading 1 there. Does that make sense? But in this case, there's no non-zero entry, so what in the world do we do? That simply means the first leading 1 in this second row is not in the second column. It's in the third column. Okay? So I, so, I, so I shift it over one more. So I need a leading one at this point now. I need this to become a leading one. And how do I do that? I'm going to take uh, two times row two and replace row two with that. Right? I'm going to multiply everything by two there to get a leading one there. Okay? And so I'm going to go... Um, if I do second entry one, two three, four times, oops, sorry, four times, I, I finally get back to that first one that I did, this one up here. 
and all I have to do is edit this one. You, I mean, just I'm just showing you a quick way of using entry. You can go second uh, matrix and pull up the the map and do it that way as well. I like this. I can now modify this. So I multiply by two. So let me delete the one divided by. So there's two, and, I, and I'm multiplying answer, and I'm multiplying row two. All right. So this is two times row two. And there's there's my one. There's my one. Okay. So I have to do this all in one step, unfortunately, because I uh, I want to make sure I do this before I get the zeros beneath that leading one. So I've got a one zero 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 two zero zero zero, and then looking back here, I've got a one half one. These other rows, of course, are all unaffected. So now I get zeros underneath this one, and how do I do that? Well, to get a zero here, I'm going to take what row three, and I'm going to add the reciprocal of negative one half is positive one half. I'm going to take one half of what row what two. That's our pivot row now. So everything's predicated on that leading one now. I multiply that row two entry by a half, negative one half plus a half. That's going to zero that entry out. I'm going to replace row three with that result. And then row four, the opposite of one half is negative one half. Row two again, and that goes to row four. Okay. So again, I go back to my, I'm just going to do second entry, second entry again. There's my multiply, I add a multiple of one row to another. My multiplier this time is a half. So when I edit this, I do one divided by, and notice if I type anything, it's going to type over just to remind yourself, you can do second INS is insert mode. Notice it turns to underscore. I can now put a two there. Okay. And then I can go over the push the over arrow. Notice it's now a full block. That's type over mode again. It, it, anytime you hit a key, you get out of that insert mode, the, any of your directional arrow keys. Okay. And I'm doing multiplying what row? Row two by a half. Okay. Uh, oh, no, yeah, sorry. Yeah, multiplying row 2 by half and replacing row 3 with that. Sorry, I got lost in my train of thought there. Okay, so 1 half times row 2, and we're going to add that to row 3. All right, and that should get a 0 there, and indeed it does. You see that? Make sure you're getting the 0 there, and now we need to get a 0 here. So we do this one. I do second entry. The only thing I'm going to do is change that. I'm going to second insert the little negative 1 half in front of that. Again, multiplying row 2 and replacing that with row 4. And there's my 0. All right, so let's, let's type in that again. So again, the first two columns essentially are unchanged. And then we get these. So we've locked in, we got our leading one here, got our leading one here. So now we go down to the next row, which is the third row, and we move over to the next column past this leading one, right? We've got to be in echelon form, so our next leading one's got to be here. So what am I going to do to get a leading one here? I just need to multiply row three by negative one. I'm going to do negative row three and replace row three with that result. Okay. Now you can write that, you know what's going to happen. But again, I'm just going to show you in the calculator. I will go ahead and do that. I'm going to do second entry, second entry, second entry. Go back to my last multiply row. And I'm multiplying row three, right, row three, by negative one. So I just need to edit that. Multiplier is negative insert mode one. And then multiply row three by that. And that should change that uh, negative one to a positive one. And it did. Okay, so we know what it looks like. Get a little cramped here. So 
negative 1 becomes positive 1. Everything else is the same. Go to my next page here. I've got to get, get a little cramped there. All right. So now, notice that the you know, next thing would be, okay, so i got the leading one. Get zeros beneath it, okay? Well, I mean, you're not going to do this, but if the computer program was doing this, you could just program it to say, okay, well, the opposite of zero is zero, so you can take zero times row three and add it to row four, right? <laughs> but, of course, we're not going to do that. you got a zero there already, so we're, we're done with that. And then you go down to find your next leading one, which is what? Go to the fourth row, go past there, but you look at that entry there, and it's zero, and, and you can't change that. You can't go above it. You, you look below it, and there's nothing below it, and so that has to be a zero. There's not going to be a leading one. Um, in this last row. There's not going to be a leading one in the last row. And notice it's all zeros, which is good. Any row of all zeros is at the bottom. stays at the bottom. Okay, so this right now is in row echelon form. If we were doing Gaussian elimination, if I was doing Gaussian elimination, I would stop here. I would stop here and use back substitution to solve. Okay. But this is Gauss-Jordan, right? Remember the directions was Gauss-Jordan, so it's a different uh, thing now. We're going to continue to get this in reduced row echelon form. And so the way we want to do that then is we want to get zeros above the leading ones, okay? And so where are our leading ones? Hey, here's a one here. Is this, is this a leading one here? No, it's not a leading one. The leading ones are what? In the first row, it's that one. Second row, it's that one. And third row, it's that one. That is not a leading one there. There's no leading one in the fourth row. So I want to get zeros above these, these, these leading ones here. Okay. And so the, the way we can do this um, is we can um, add multiples of these. We want to get zeros above these leading ones. So I can add corresponding multiples to these, to these pivot ones. Um, to get zeros above now the leading ones. Don't have any zeros or anything above this leading one. So how do we proceed here now? Um, does it matter which one you start with? It doesn't really, but in a way it does. I'm going to start with getting zeros above the leading, this, this leading one here, the, the one sort of furthest to the right over. And, you know, kind of you kind of start here, get your leading one, and then you know work your way to the from left to right. But when we're getting leading, uh, getting zeros above the leading ones, it's best to work from right to left. And so, and the reason is, I'm going to take multiples of this third row to get zeros above it. Notice that since there's a zero entry here, I'm, I'm not going to change these values at all. And that's real important. I don't. You know, these are all zeros. I'm not going to change any of these values because anything times zero is zero, and I add that, I'm, I'm going to get zero. And so, how do I get rid of this? Um, Let's start up here at this negative one half. What's the opposite of negative one half? It's positive one half. So I'm going to take row one, that's in row one entry, and I'm going to do one half times my pivot row. So I'm going to do add one half times row three, and I'm going to replace row one with that. That's going to get a zero here. And then for row two, what do I have? Row two, row two, what's the opposite of three? That's negative three. I'm going to do that to row three, the pivot row. And I'm going to replace row two with that. That will get me my zero above that leading one. Okay, so let's do that with the calculator. Do second entry twice to get the you know multiply right multiply row plus. That's add a multiple of one add a multiple of one row to another. And the multiple is a half, so I just need to delete that little negative one half. Um, and the matrix is answer again. That doesn't change. What row am I multiplying by half? Row 3. See my subscript 3 there? So that's row 3. And what row am I adding it to? I'm adding it to, to row 1. Convert to fractions key. So that should get rid of that, that negative 1 half. Let's see if it does. Uh, it, it becomes a 0. Get, get that 0. Now I need to make that, make that 3 a 0 above the leading 1. And this will do it. Do I have a second entry? Multiplier is now negative 3. Negative 3. Let me delete that 2. So times the matrix uh, answer, and then uh, the row I'm multiplying is again 3, negative 3 times row 3, but I'm adding it to row 2. So change that 1 to a 2, hit enter, and again watch that uh, leading, that, that, that 0, or that 3 become a 0. 
above the leading line, right there. Okay. And all these columns over here are unchanged. Because yeah, we, we have zeros in row 3, so anytime I multiply row 3 by anything times 0, still 0, it's not going to affect these guys. But now my, my notice that fourth column has zeros above and below that leading one. So that's good. And then the last column is uh, 13 halves, 1, 0, 0. Okay, so that, that, that may change. It didn't in this case, but it could change back there. Uh, and so my last step is, you know, my, again, my leading ones. Here's my leading one. Here's my leading one. Here's my leading one. This leading one has zeros below and above. This one has below, but we need to get it above, so I need to make that a zero. And we will be in the reduced rush on form. So how do I do that? The opposite of one half is negative one half. So I'm going to take row one, and I'm going to add negative one half times what row? The pivot row now is row two. That's where my pivot or leading one is. All right, so row two. And I'm going to replace row 1 with that result. Okay, so my multiplier is negative 1 half. Second insert, divided by 2. Answer is my matrix. I'm multiplying row 2 and replacing row 1. And notice it did get rid of that 0. And hey, to my relief, there's no more fractions. No more fractions. Okay. Let me just copy this down. Alright, so there's a leading one, there's a leading one, and there's a leading one, right? The first non zero entry in any row has to be a one. And notice, above and below those leading ones, we have zeros. So this is the reduced row echelon form. Okay. Now, reduced row echelon form is unique. A minute ago, we came up with this row echelon form, right? We said we could have stopped if this was Gaussian elimination and used back substitution at this point. This is not unique. Okay. And so this is important. If you're checking with your calculator, let me just say that if you go to second matrix and go over to math and scroll all the way down to the bottom where we were. If you look a little bit further, many of you would say, hey, look at there, REF, RREF, hey, why don't we just use those? Well, you can check with those, okay? Again, we're not teaching you just how to be button pushers, but we want you to understand the algorithm, okay? But you can check the Gauss-Jordan elimination because this answer we get down here, this reduced rush on form, is unique, okay? Um, however, the REF is, is not. And let me just show you that. Let's, let's do the um, RREF, and, I, and now I got to go back to the original matrix. What was the original matrix? That was the matrix A, so second matrix, type 1 or hit enter, and you get matrix A in there. And, and let's just take the reduced rush on form of A. What is it? It is exactly what we have here, okay? And, and this, that's a check, yeah, so that's where we're going. But now we understand how you know, the calculator got there. That's the sort of the process we went through. But now let me just show you this. If I go to second matrix and I do uh, just REF, second matrix A, and hit enter, okay? Um, and, and let me, I should have done this. Let me do second entry. Let me convert two fractions on that, okay? Just see a little better. See, here, here's this calculator's REF. That is not exactly what we have here. It is not going to be unique. There is an infinite number of REF forms. But one thing you will note is the location of these leading ones is the same. That will always be true. Okay? But other entries may not be the same. Okay. But this is Gauss-Jordan, and so this is what you have to get to. Okay? Now, the question was, again, use gauss jordan to solve the following system. You think, we've done a lot of stuff here, but you're showing me you understand this algorithm. We have not solved anything yet. <laughs> the system, right? Remember the original system? What is the values of x1, x2, and x3 that make this system uh, true always? And so, again, we want to take a look at the solution now. So how do I, how do, I do that? 
Well, notice the system is consistent. I don't have a situation where I have, what, zeros and then a leading one in the last column. I don't have zero equal one anywhere. Okay. Um, I do notice that there are three leading ones, and remember these are the constants, and this is x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, x sub 4, but notice x sub 2 is a free variable. x sub 2 has no leading one, so x sub 2 is a free variable, and, and, and that means it's a parameter, and so we have infinitely many solutions. So I need to parameterize, I need to let x sub 2 be a parameter like, like t, okay? And then what do I have? Well, let's work our way, sort of back substitution, if you will. Of course, the last equation has no information. 0 equals 0. Okay, that's no information. This third equation says what? 0x1, 0x2, 0x3, 1x4 equals 0. x4 equals 0. Right? So x4 is equal to 0. Hey, I have that. Right? The second equation says 0x1, 0x2, 1x3, 0x4 equals 1. x3 equals 1. Right. And then the first equation says 1x1 plus 2x2 0x3, 0x4 equals 6. Okay, But it's, we're going to parameterize. So x sub 2 is equal to t. So I'm going to replace that with t. And I'm going to say, therefore, solving for x sub 1, which is a fixed variable, I'm going to say that's 6 minus 2t, subtract right, 2t, subtract 2t from both sides. There's x sub 1. Okay. And so my final answer, remember, should be you know, these, all of these together. Let's write this in as an ordered four tuple, right? So x sub 1 is 6 minus 2t, comma, what's x sub 2? t. That's the parameter. x sub 3 is 1. x sub 4 is 0. So there's infinitely many solutions. And they're of this form. In other words, you can let t be any real number and you'll get a solution. For instance, if t is 0, if t is 0, then one of the solutions is 6, 0, 1, 0. x1 is 6, x2 is 0, x3 is 1, x4 is 0. That's one solution. If t is 1, I get what? 6 minus 2, I get 4, 1, 1, 0. If t is um, negative 1, I get 6 plus 2, 8, negative 1, 1, 0, and so on. There's infinitely many solutions. That's the solution to the system. Okay, so that's what we're looking for, but the process of this algorithm is what's important. And so, notice how I set this up, how I've written everything neatly out, I've showed every step, and I've indicated, right, with the augmented matrix each time, I indicated the row operations I'm doing, all the time doing no more than one row operation to any given row. You can do multiple row operations, but notice they have to affect different rows. Okay. All right, so there is an example of Gaussian, uh, Gauss-Jordan rather, elimination.